Q zombie face. Muhaha. I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, it's an hour. What am I going to do? So, to keep you guys from gouging your eyes out, I decided not to put music on this video so you can play whatever music you want, but I'm talking without a script so that you guys have cues when to look up and see what's going on. So, enjoy. All right, so first things first, after priming, we will base coat using this mix. And the important thing is to remember that you're not going to get it all in one go. It's just like painting on a base coat. You thin it enough that it's not going to cover all in one shot. So same thing with the airbrush. If it starts to pool, you're doing too much. <laughs> so if you have to come around a second time, then come around a second time, even a third time if you need to. Alright, so now that the base coat is done and dry, we're going to do our first highlight. So you want to concentrate this on where your medium tones are hitting, like the, the front part of the chest, the upper part of his shoulders, uh, the tops of the muscles, things like that. But keep in mind that there's a highlight coming after this. So this is your medium tone, basically. Now we're coming in with our final highlight and you want to hit where the brightest points of the skin are going to be. And it doesn't have to be completely realistic. If you have to add a highlight somewhere to make it draw the eye and look a little bit more interesting, this is the time to do that. So now that the skin's blocked in, we're going to basically hit our save button by going over it with matte varnish 
And why matte varnish? Because we're going to be using dry pigments to shade the skin even more. And you need a porous surface for the pigment to stick to. If you used gloss, it would not work so well. So, you'll see. So here we go with my favorite pigment to use on skin, which is Secret Weapon Violet. And uh, you are applying this dry. What you're doing is dipping your brush in the pigment, wiping a lot of the chunks off, and then trying to deposit it right where the deepest shadows are going to be. And then, you know, if, if you mess up a little bit, it doesn't matter because it isn't permanent until we varnish over it again. So what you're trying to do is to get it in those areas, and then if you want to blend it out, wipe your brush off, get most of the pigment off, and then basically drag the pigment out of that shadow area, and you'll get a nice blend. So that's pretty much what we're doing right now, is kind of fighting that green tone that we did in the base coat. A lot of you out there who haven't bought an airbrush yet, this might be a, a good alternative for you, but just remember that when you're working with pigments in this way, that you have to work from light to dark. Um, you might have tried before, I've seen other people try to have like a black cloak and put sandy colored pigment on the cloak and then once it was varnished, that lighter color went away and that's just the way they work. Uh, you have to work from light to dark. So if you had like red cloaks on black templars or whatever you can actually get the shading in using pigment and have that flexibility of being able to rub off what you don't want and add more in if you need to and the cool thing about using pigments dry is that you cannot make brush strokes at all so it's it's kind of good you seeing the effect in action right now so
Now we're just cleaning off the pigment from uh, areas we don't want. And this is just a cotton bud dipped in water. So don't send me a question, hey, uh, I googled H2O and I can't find anyone selling it. You know, is, is it Vallejo? So, yeah, it's water in a cotton bud. Yeah, basically we're just cleaning off the tops of the muscles where maybe I brushed over and got a little bit of pigment or since it is applied dry, it spills off some areas, this lets you do the cleanup. And if it's in crevices that you don't like, you can just get a brush wet with water and agitate it out of there. And pretty much going through this step, once everything is where it should be and you cleaned off all the areas, you're going to make that pigment shading permanent by going over it with varnish. If it didn't get as dark as you wanted it to be or you would like to add another color like black under the armpits or just a darker area, just uh, varnish it and go over it again. So if it's not getting dark in one layer, just don't keep mashing pigments in. Get it where you like it at that stage and then make it permanent by varnishing it and then go back in again. And you can do that as many times as you want. So the pigment's looking good, and I'm going to go ahead and matte varnish it in and seal that pigment right into the model. And as you will see, the pigment will not disappear because we did dark over light. I really like the box art for this model. And they used a, a purple that would have, out of ten people, five people would say it was blue, and the other five would say it was purple. So it was that nice in-between color. So out of the Vallejo game color line, dark blue was about right for that. So for the first highlight on this hat, I decided to throw some somber gray into the dark blue, and we put two parts somber gray, one part dark blue. That's what I'm going to start doing. If you see the ratios right there, it says mix, two, one. Whatever co number comes first is whatever paint is named first. So there you go. That's the format we're going to now. But 
it, this mix was thinned probably five to one it, you're trying to get this glaze mix where you dip your brush you wipe it off on a towel and you can still see the color of the bristles as well as paint within the bristles it's not like the whole bristle end is covered in paint it, it's kinda hard to give you a, an exact number because it depends on what paint you're using so you have to be able to look at it and it's something that you get from sensation over time so just thin it enough to where you can do your glaze layering and if you don't know what glaze layering is I plan on doing a video explaining the different types of layering and how to do them and whatnot but that's what we're doing here Now for the second highlight, we're just using straight somber gray, thinned a little bit more as you can tell from the brush. I keep wiping it off on my thumb because I'm having a little too much paint for the blending that I'm trying to do. And this is actually me quick blending. And for competition stuff, you thin way more and a lot more layers, but for this, it'll do alright For this final highlight, we're just using pure wolf gray. And what I'm doing, instead of making a constant line across the edges of the hat, because it's, you know, it could be a cloth or beaten up texture, I'm basically tapping the brush where I want the highlights at so it's not so smooth, I guess. Messing with textures, you start to do that. You start loving that tap tap stuff and you'll see that when we start getting into the jacket as I do a lot of that trying to add textures to something that you would normally just base coat wash and highlight or something so this is that the first of those techniques right now so try it out when you're doing a texture now we're gonna start pushing in the shadows and this is done with a one-to-one -one mix of dark blue and black. And what this is going to do is give that 
had a little bit more contrast because we brought up the highlight just from the mid-tone being dark blue. All those shadowed areas are areas that we want to emphasize a change in direction like where the top of the hat meets the side of the hat we're going to be laying this shadow color. And moving on, I decide to base coat the jacket that's torn to shreds. And this is done using some thinned down goblin green. Pretty much all your paints that you're using should be thinned down at least one to one, somewhere around there. Just because you want to prevent brush strokes and chunky paint and things like that. And if you want to speed through it, if the paint's not drying fast enough, a blow dryer works great. So go on thin keep your smooth finish and this is gonna help because if you're trying to get into blending using glazes or layer blending and stuff having a smooth surface is the the first part of the job you gotta have a smooth surface so if you have really chunky paint you're trying to blend over it and you're wondering why it's you know the paint settling in areas you don't want it to that's probably your problem so thin layers do as many as you need to do to get a solid color before you move on to the next step So now we're doing the first highlight on the jacket here. I think we have one more highlight. But right now it's it's a pretty thin mix and I'm just working up where I think the highlights would be. Do that as many times as you need to do. You don't have to be so clean because, you know, the jacket's shredded up, but there's certain areas that you want to pay attention to.
Now you might be wondering, going, what's what's this texture thing Les is talking about? And uh, I've just been learning it myself, trying to make things interesting. And if you can tell by what's happening right now, you'll see that I'm doing a lot of horizontal and vertical stripes. And that's just something that came to me while I was in the middle of painting it that I said, hey, you know, I want this jacket to look interesting. I don't want it to just be green. I want it to look green, but when you get closer, maybe you start to see a pattern or a design in the jacket. So it's not just a green shredded jacket. So this is what I mean by adding texture is that, you know, you could do more than just paint a color and then blend it and things like that. If it's a horse, you could add little lines everywhere to actually simulate the fur. And same thing on this jacket is I want it to look like maybe it had a very light plaid design on it. And I just did that with the highlight color. Now we start to shadow using a one-to-one -one mix of Imperial Blue and Goblin Green. And it was just as quick as doing the highlight step. You don't have to be so smooth with it because it's tattered cloth. But we do want to add more contrast in those shadow areas.
now to tie the blue and the the bright green mix and stuff like that is I thin down some black green ink and I'm gonna glaze over the whole thing and the whole th purpose of the glaze is to colorize whatever it touches and what it does is all those colors we used it puts it under basically a filter of green and it helps to make the blend more homogeneous it's it's a smoother blend so you can skip this step but I think it definitely helps the blending look a lot better So for the cufflinks and the pants, I went back to the box art. I really like that they made those all white. It was a nice contrast against them. You would think, oh, he'd be dirty or covered with blood or something. And no, it was just pretty clean. He actually looks pretty nice. So we use wolf gray, which is almost white, but not so much that when we come back and highlight with white that you won't actually see the highlight.
So now we're just doing the highlight on all these white areas, catching the folds in the cloth, and anything that would catch the most light. So all your little edges that are facing upward, go ahead and put a stripe of white on that, the tops of his thighs, all that good stuff. Again, using the box art for reference, they had the little belt around the top of his hat, kind of a gray-green. So I mixed cold gray and that black ink that we used for the glaze one-to-one -to, -one to kind of make a green-gray. And we're just base coating that belt. Now for his boots, we're just doing a plain old leather, and this is my recipe for doing leather, pretty much. So again with base coating, you're going to be tempted to not dilute your paint, but you definitely want to. It's, it's a good habit to have. Now we start our first highlight on the boots and that is done by adding a little bit of bronze flesh tone to the Beastie Brown. You want about a one to one mix and just start hitting all the areas except for the deepest details. So if there's folds and stuff leave those Beastie Brown and just try to get all those medium areas.
now we're doing the third color. See, that's going to start to be a, a habit of ours is to have about three colors on something. And that doesn't count a wash or anything. Have about three colors, four colors if you want to deepen the shadows, and then count your wash as something else. And you will see if you treat every piece to have three different colors, your models will actually have a, a bit more character, start to look nicer. Now it's time to hit those gold areas, the little buttons on his cufflinks, uh, the buckle on his hat. I do the tip of his boot, and anything else that you think might be gold. And this is totally preference, but I believe from the concept art that it was gold. So I use my favorite gold, which is Vallejo Liquid Gold. Now we start on painting his eyebrows and his hair. And as you're gonna see, is I'm using a color called black gray. On the camera, it looks like it's just black, but if we went over it with a black oil wash, you would see the wash. And that goes off of the principle that you should never base coat anything white. Base coat close to it, but don't actually do white. That's why on the cluff links we did, wolf gray 
close to white, not exactly white. And it's the same thing with black. Use something that black can still contrast, but is not completely gray. And the reason for that is that you cannot highlight white and you cannot shadow black. So now we use cold gray, thinned, of course, to start highlighting those areas that we just painted almost black. <laughs> so go ahead and tap those areas. And if you're doing dark colors, they're usually going to reflect a lot more than a lighter color. And by that, I mean, like, that's choosing what kind of highlight you're going to give it like cloth is going to have a very diffused same thing with skin very diffused highlight it's not going to be sharp unless it's on the face like a, a, the bridge of the nose or a lip or something and for areas like armor things like that they have a very crisp edge and they're not made of cloth or something they're going to have very sharp highlights so that's another thing to think about
a coat of gloss varnish is applied in preparation for the oil wash. Now we're doing gloss because we want the capillary action of the oil to be able to fall into all the details. Also, since it's not porous, the oil will be easier to clean up. I also forgot to paint his cigar, so we'll go ahead and do that before the oil wash. For the tip of the cigar, where it's supposed to be hot, put a little dab of orange on there. And just on the edge of that orange, we'll put a little dot of yellow. And now we're painting the teeth and the fingernails. Alright, now time for the oil wash. I'm using Winsor & Newton Van Dyke Brown and I'm using an actual oil wash. It's not one of the water solubles so I thinned it with mineral spirits which is also going to be what we're going to clean up with. If you're using water soluble oils and you're thinning it with water then you're going to do the clean up with water. So this is what I use. It's mineral spirits. You can get it at the Walmart or a DIY store like Lowe's or Home Depot and you guys overseas they might not call it mineral spirits it might be called white spirits and I haven't tried turpentine I think turpentine would be too harsh and start rubbing paint off so I can't really give you advice on that if you can get mineral spirits get it it's cheap and you can get lots of it for a little bit of money
So once the oil wash is actually dry, which I totally cheated and used a blow dryer, which only takes minutes. A lot of you guys were asking me, oh, using oils, it takes, you know, weeks to dry. If you use it pure on a canvas or something like that, thinned, I haven't had any problems with it. Just dry, taking as long to dry as a normal acrylic. Just blow drying it until it looks dry, varnishing over it, no problems. So, yeah, that's my opinion about that. But yeah, just the same thing as with the pigments, clean off the areas you didn't want the wash and this will make it look super sharp and once everything is where it should be, seal it in using varnish. If not, you can take mineral spirits, clean up certain areas, reapply and keep going back and forth until you like how the model looks and where everything is and then once everything's said and done and dry then varnish it in and call it good. I liked where everything was sitting, so we're throwing the matte varnish on it and calling it good. And a big thank you goes out to YouTube user Weird Painting also known as Digital Coma on the forums for providing the mini for this tutorial. You are awesome. You guys got to watch it because of him. So, big thanks.